the long fin eel is endemic to New Zealand and there is a very fast dwindling population mostly due to commercial fishing and habitat loss. When I talk about eels people have no idea what I'm talking about. They're totally taken for granted and the idea of having a sanctuary is quite contro controversial to most people. When I researched them I found that they were as endangered as the great spotted kiwi and I started thinking if the great spotted kiwi have so much protection why don't the eels? So that was what gave me the idea to start the eel sanctuary and to get the message out to people. So this tapestry, or part of this is part of it, it went down to Parliament with a submission. Um, against the commercial fishing of the eels. The idea was initiated by Stephanie Bowman who was a tourist from Canada and she first came to New Zealand thinking it was an amazing green place. She came back and she started seeing all the signs about do not swim in this lake it's too polluted. So she heard about the eels she decided that she would come back and she'd start this big protest. So she sewed the head and the tail and she encouraged people to make the middle section so a lot of schools and kindergartens, community groups and it's been all around the country. Just about complete. Um, Tilda um, thanks heaps for letting me do this. It's been really cool. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> uh, if you could, if you could just put that, uh, that um, the eyes in for for the um, the kaitiaki. The kaitiaki is about your job, not mine. So that's why you're going to bring that vision forward because it was your vision in the beginning. It's strange because, like, you know, our children are the ones that teach us. So. It's all yours, mate. <laughs> the story of Tōnaroa is, is throughout Aotearoa, um, has many different types of um, dialect and understanding. In Ngātahine, it's believed that Atunaroa uh, was uh, married to, well, he had children to Hine Terepo, who was a swamp maiden. He had two sons, uh, Mere Mere and Atatahi, which that was their names. And they became the morning star and the evening star. Just sort of depicted in this carving. Carving symbolizes the, the potential energy and the and the movement of what we're trying to put out there. It's our book, it's our language, it's our our orative that speaks for itself. The illusions that we've tried to create in it um, touch on stories. Um, and symbolise uh, the greatness that was. The introduction of man, it's changed the dynamic of how we look at things. They're not as treasured and, and looked upon as, as much as they used to be. So in taking on this take or this job of carving this carving, it was my pleasure to represent not only the people of this valley, but the people of my people to tell the story of Tonorua and his sons and his, um, his upcomings. And I think the moral of the story is, is if, like mankind or like Maui, how he did things to show us the right and the wrong ways of doing things that 
we need to think more deeply and spiritually about the taonga or the treasures that we have in our, in our rivers. So what's here is, is a small part of a bigger story that depicts movement, being the water or the puna or wai maori. The water is, uh, is the important part of this carving. Uh, the rest of it is just to show you things that we can, that we've seen, things like the shape of the eel, the hauraki style of the kaitiaki that are here in the gulf. So I'm Matt Bloxham and I work as a freshwater scientist for, for local government and uh, I you know, find today very exciting actually, this whole idea of, of um, starting an eel sanctuary. It's something that um, you don't see a lot of, uh, you know, it's quite a new thing, it's sort of a wee bit cutting edge. Um, and the beauty uh, of having a, a sanctuary for eels is that of course they've been, they've been pretty hard hit over the years by uh, all sorts of things, eel, eel fishes, but, but, but also habitat loss and that sort of thing. And I think that Rob's sort of idea behind this was to actually create a, a, an area where they could be free from, from all those pressures. The two major species are, are long fins and short fins, and short fins are um, by and large far more common. They seem to have been sort of a bit more uh, successful at, at exploiting uh, lowland habitat where eels um, are more ubiquitous. They're found through all the different fisheries, uh, fish, fish guilds all over the show um, so that you'll find eels <clears throat> and right from lowland, low elevation habitat all the way inland and they'll penetrate a long way inland because of their ability to actually climb. They're incredible, sort of very determined climbers, and so they'll extend a long way f inland. Eels um, have quite a remarkable life history. They they start off uh, uh, as um, when they first reach New Zealand shores, they start off as glass eels, uh, and then when the timing is right, they, they they'll spend the first part of their life inside the um, estuarine um, parts of the of the. Of the, of the environment and you can see here this is such a fantastic uh, a staging ground for them as, as juveniles and then when the time is right then they'll start to feed and they'll start to push up into the, into the higher elevation habitat. The really nice thing about this fantastic um, area here is that um, it covers, it covers um, uh, you know everything right from the, the low elevation habitat right to the headwaters so you know, all the habitat there that they'll ever need is here. I first got interested in eels at my grandparents holiday house up north near Mangafai. They have a stream running past full of native fish and eels. We used to get meat from the butcher on the way up. Over a few days you could get to know one really well and they'd come swimming up as soon as you got there. They hold a sort of a funny place in everybody's heart. So I guess uh, eels, um, you know, for a lot of people, uh, tend to conjure up images of, of fear and loathing because they they have that, those serpentine, the serpent-like features with their wee nostrils and stuff. They do look a bit spooky, and because of their size, but um, they are pretty amazing creatures. Yeah. T'as quel âge Qu'est-ce que ça peut te faire Tu veux un cachou Oups. Non merci, je ne suis pas très grave. Oups. 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 J'ai fumé du pot, c'est marrant mais ça rend pas causant. C'est comme la poussée. Non je sais pas. J'ai tâté du kiff aussi. Bof. Il y a toujours ces qui je dors pas. Oups. Ils sont là à traîner, ils sentent vraiment mauvais. Moi je suis dans un monde vert et mauve toute la journée. Quand j'ouvre les yeux, c'est. Tu veux un cachou Non merci, je ne suis pas très drogue. <rire>